Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Being a police officer in Las Vegas is a real interesting job because it's such a transient town. People from South America and people from Canada here and it's just a it's a pretty cool place to work. I like to I like to be around different types of people and, and this is ideal for that sort of thing. Right now we're going to some kind of battery call where somebody's getting beaten up down at the corner. I'm not sure the details of the call it hasn't come out yet, but uh, it's just right around the corner, so she's, the dispatch has sent us to it. Black male, light complexion, 25, 5'8", slim, wearing a green shirt and a grayish black pants. Leaves us. She caught him in a 414 last week, and it's retaliation. Uh, medicals en route. Our victim's uh, pregnant. He got mad because he got caught stealing, so he went back and beat up the clerk who caught him stealing. Kevin, can you be en route to Tom 336? We're going to go over here to the store. And talk to the victim. And hopefully she'll prosecute. I'm sure she will. We're gonna just make sure she's okay. I caught him stealing about two weeks ago, and, uh -huh. I, and I came outside. And I told him, "Hey, you gotta put the 12 pack back. You can't steal." And he just walked away, right? Uh -huh. So then he comes in a couple of days later, and he tells. He's going to walk in and, like, use our restroom and get a refill and stuff. And I told him, no, get the hell out of here. You shoplifted, you're a thief, don't come in here anymore. Right. He goes, I'm going to get you. Starts calling me names, fat bitch, and all this other stuff. And, and I, I, well, I called him some names back and told him to get out. Sure. You know? And then he comes in today, and he walks around the back of the register. And I told him, hey, you can't come in here. Get out, because he had a refill cup. I thought he was going to come and try and get a refill. And he threw, like, hot water on me. It wasn't that hot. I mean, I take sh hotter showers. Right. And th but then he jumped up in the booth where I was, and he's, like, right under the camera, too, and he and he started hitting me. All I did was I protected my baby. I just right. went over and protected my baby. Do you baby guys have video surveillance account. of all that? Color video surveillance. Okay. Is the manager on the way in for that? Yeah, he should be here any time, though. Okay. Did he come in and ask for anything? Yeah. No. He just came in and threw hot water on me. and. and where did he get the water from? He got it from our bathroom. Okay. Somebody had been using the bathroom and handed him over the key before, you know, before. Are you sure that it's water? Yeah. Smell it. It's water. Okay. I I'm just making sure it wasn't urine. Um, well, that's the guy that they have in custody that's over there? That's the guy. Okay, good. They're bringing him over and we'll get your statements and stuff and be real detailed on that, especially the stuff before that happened and then especially him saying when he said he's gonna come back and get you bitch okay. all that stuff is That's real important videotape. I even wrote down the time that he came in and put it on videotape for my boss good um, I came in I grabbed the key to go to the bathroom I used the restroom I came back she turned around and told me you can't be in here blah 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 you why was she saying that she talking about I seen you steal a 12 pack etc uh -huh. um, did you try to steal a 12 pack nope Okay. No, did, I did you not. bring one up to the counter? You're gonna buy one, and she just started. No, okay. no, no. I didn't bring no twelve pack to the counter. Okay. Um, so I started calling her bitches and etc. etc. Right. Um, after I told, after she was like, "Oh, well, f you," she flipped me off. I told her, "I'm gonna get you." Okay. I came in today. Um, I threw water on her face, and I tried yes. to slap it out of her. When you came in today, you knew she was gonna be working. No, I did not. 
No, I did not. I just I got off work. I just got off work. Where do you work at? Um, I do construction. Okay. Now, just because somebody calls you names doesn't mean you can raise your hand to them. Right. Okay, that's not right. That's wrong. That's not how society's supposed to be, that's okay? okay? And because that's what happened, that's why you're going to jail. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. All right. Watch your head. Did you know she's pregnant? No. Would that have changed your mind about you going in there and trying to knock a block off? Yeah. You think so? Okay. Well, she is. Think about that for a minute, okay? This tape that we're watching now is uh, when he first made the initial threat against her on uh, June the 3rd at about 4.30. Three days ago. Yeah, three days ago. So in this tape, he'll show him he'll come in and he'll use the bathroom key first, and then he'll come back later, and that's when the confrontation takes place. It's coming up pretty soon. Okay, this is him. He's returning the bathroom key. Okay. At first he said, you better watch yourself, and she said, what are you going to do? And then he sort of lunged through the door, and as he was leaving, he says, you better watch your back. If you listen okay. really carefully. Okay. Does he come back in? He couldn't really hear that. He says, you better watch your back. We have him three days ago coming into the store. She tells him, no, you can't come back because you tried to steal a 12-pack. That's right. And um, he denies doing that, but that's irregardless. He came back three days ago and said, um, you know, use the restroom key. She says, I don't want you in here. You tried to steal a 12-pack. And there was some words were exchanged. Here she is sitting up here. We have bought audio. Okay, that's that guy leaving. Yes, yeah, so that's right after this guy leaves. Okay, why don't we ru rewind it and watch that um, number three again, real close, okay. if we can. This lady's just doing her job, just yeah. working behind the counter. And so he came in intentionally with that. Yeah, he came in to do that, right. which is why we're going to be able to prove that he came in with the intention of hurting her and, and starting trouble with her, which is why we're going to get a felony on. OK, then that's her calling us. And about 10 minutes later, we have him in custody. Excellent job. Here we go. Caught on tape, and he's off to county jail, burglary and battery. I've been a policeman for about 10 years, but I've been with North Las Vegas coming up on three years. In fact, my partner and I, we've been teamed up for about five months together now. So uh, we know each other pretty well, and I think we work together real well. Wayne's a hard worker, and he likes to get after it, and that's excellent. The one subject on the roof screaming for a 451. Okay, what we're going to now is we have either a mental subject or a subject high on uh, narcotics. He's standing up on top of a roof screaming for more drugs. Apparently this guy is, is right now being fairly violent about being taken off this roof or even coming down. Hang on. Okay, we're gonna have to come to a stop here. Yep. Are we over there? They're stopped. You're good. Not a problem. Get an eyeball for him. Where do you have? I'm looking. I can't find which side. We're obviously yeah, I don't know where she went. We're going to be on this side of the street. Let's go around these cars. Okay, okay, they're there, right there. There he is. Oh, son of a gun. There he is. Yep. Yeah. Charlie, what do you need, Jim? You got it. Davey, which side do you want me to take? They're going to fix you up, guy, but you got to come down. Scott. Hi, don't. 
have nothing. Well, nobody said you have. Hey, Scott. Dwayne. Didn't you promise Dwayne. me to come down here? I'll put real news for You, but you gotta come down. I want shot heroin. All right, come down. I can't give yeah. it to you up there. That I'm not sure of. But we can't leave you sitting on somebody's house. No. Do you live here? <laughs> I can promise you that nobody's going to hurt you. Cool. I can't. Hey, Scott, we get hurt. Come we on. Got the ambulance out here. We'll take you out and get some help. How's that sound? Scott. Come on, Scott. <laughs> the easiest way to do it is just to come down off that house. All right? Yeah, we got ladders. And I wanted to go right here with the ladder. Okay. I can get up on the roof from the front brick wall. If he sees you guys, he's gonna attract his, his attention towards you. Do you want me? Uh, then I can come from the other side. We, we, want to go up together. we all need to get up there together and then okay. just basically move real quietly because he's on. He's probably four, five, one heroin, and we know what that is. Okay. And beanbags. Just be careful do so we don't tumble off the roof. Let's okay. get up, see if we can get a ladder back here first. Scott. 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 Okay, if he starts to come down, let's back off a little bit so he doesn't feel like right, he's getting Scott, choked out. Here's the ladder. Wait, can you come on can over? Can you keep your hands out of your yeah. pants, Scott? I want to do it to get heroin. Scott, we got the ambulance here to help you. All right? You need some help getting down? Scott! You're not paying attention. Wait. Hurry up, he's going to grab a hypodermic. Just wait till we're all three up there. There he goes. He's running. Hold, Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Coming to you. There it okay, is. we got it. Good. Stand by control. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I got it. You're doing well. You're doing fine. Relax. Relax. Easy. Easy now. Relax. Do nothing. No, You're you okay. didn't do anything. We're getting you some We're help. Get okay. you some help, all right, Here's Brad, another relax. leg strap. Sorry. I don't we think he's. Hands up here. Okay. Alex, could you get me some tape? Trauma tape. Keep him off. Relax, guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's probably hotter Let's go. Than daylight. Okay, there you go. Okay. Okay, I checked his bridge as best I could, even in the cross. It doesn't look like he's got nothing. Okay, <laughs> tell us again. Tell this man what you had all today so they know what you're doing. And what else? Crack. Okay. How long ago? Early today, just a little while ago, I was going for behind there, not to charge him. I saw Davey sneaking up. I said, we got him now. We got him. That's why I stayed right there. He was focused on you, and we I talked to him. You were watching me, and you just kept talking. I was like, cool. Okay, when as soon as I saw your head, I knew we got him. All right, what we're going to do is we'll slide him down the ladder. You guys take one on each end. Okay. Me and David take this end. We'll take him over there, set him on the ladder. Okay. I didn't do anything. Okay, let's go down towards the roof line. Probably Dwayne. What? They said, who's the strongest one? Probably you. Just hang on, okay? Just hang on, buddy. I'm not gonna let you nothing happen. Yeah, you're, you're fine. We got it. I'm gonna lower you down to the fire. Hands. Watch his hands on the Pick side. Your Pick your hands up. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah, you got that next one? Go ahead. Let's go. Watch his arm. Oh my God. Okay, next one? Yeah, go ahead. Let me get some room Okay. All right. You guys got him? Yeah, we got him. Okay. Okay, we'll get him down. The feet need to go that way. Boy, I feel like anybody out there. Yeah, I'm clear. What are you guys on each belt? Let's pick up his goodies. Okay. How old are you, Scott? 31. 31? What's your birthday? 7765. Seven, I know his bottom of his like burned off. <sighs> Nothing. I don't think I. Yeah, his feet have got to be fried. Just with the belt around. Yeah, probably we can't let him like tumble off the roof either. No. So we got to do something. Good the job, Irene. The negotiator extraordinaire. Good girl. 
Can't believe you stayed calm that long. I'm teasing you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on one like that. Me either. I've never had a guy just... Guy stuck up on the roof. That's another one for the books, I guess. Yeah. The representative was making a slot machine repair in the 1700 block of North Rancho. As he was leaving the business, he was hit in the head and forced into the company van. Suspects then drove to an unlo unknown location in the area of Lake Mead and Comstock. Suspects then removed the cash from the van and fled in an unknown direction. Suspects in this robbery are described as black males. One is 5'10", 210, wearing a gray shirt. The second suspect is described as a black male, 6'1", 170, wearing a white t-shirt and brown pants. Okay. All right, that's fine. You take this one. All right, let's go to work. Figure it out. You got the book, right? I feel as far as uh, our job goes, uh, and my philosophy as far as dealing with people is just uh, uh, respect them or give them the kind of respect that they're giving you. And uh, I think if you usually keep that in mind, uh, you keep yourself pretty much straight and out of trouble and uh, deal appropriately with each individual. Um, you know, dealing with people on this job is something you do every day, and uh, you need to be able to do that effectively to uh, get the job done as far as I'm concerned and do it, uh, do it the right way and uh, be good at it and have a good time doing it. All right, we're going to uh, back officer with him. He's got a car failing to stop. Uh, possible stolen vehicle. He's one street east of us. We're going to see if we can't catch up to him and uh, see if we can assist. Big bumps. <laughs> Hey, bump. <laughs> okay. Hit by another cop. They're stopping. There he goes. Blue black shirt. And the location of vehicle stopped at. He's running northbound through the park. I'm going to go back this way. Just ran on to I-15. There he goes. Okay, we're gonna go down on I-15. He's going to that unit on Adams. There we go. I'll tell you what, we're gonna head up this way. Running up on the A. Curb. What it is is uh, Officer Witham went out to okay. stop this car, took off uh, subject, or the car was failed to stop, basically in a passenger bailed out and ran. And that's what we're uh, trying to catch now. Looks like I got him in custody. <coughs> so three, three yellow. That's negative. Uh, he's in custody. The other two are in the vehicle still. Uh, standing by. Good job, buddy. Come on, uh, Matt. Let's go up there. With Let's get him up. Good right. job. Stand up. Hi, right, here's good. We got it. Relax. Yeah, he was going south, that's why I told you to go south, because I thought you, he's here, we're done, we're done, we're done. <laughs> he's in custody. Good jump, though. You understand what your rights are? Yeah. Okay, you have right to remain silent, anything say can, will be used against in court of law. You have right to speak with an attorney, have an attorney present with you during any and all questioning. You understand that? What'd you just get out? For what? Attempt robbery? Was that what you finally went for, or was that the initial charge? Stay on the car, young man. No. Throw up over there, not on the car. That's why you shouldn't run from the police, man. Let's go, stand up, man. Watch. 
Well, I still might have to puke. Though. Well, don't puke. It's a sergeant's car. You don't want to puke in the sergeant's car, dude. You get very, very in much in trouble. Is it? Cool. It's a stolen vehicle, so that's cool. You want his shoes? No. Oh, somebody better. <laughs> They're yours. You're the bike guys. <laughs> What'd you stop him for? You just saw him. I saw you coming down the street, yeah, and I saw were, he wasn't stopping. Oh, they were acting suspicious back in that alley. There's a dope yeah, house there, it, right? And uh, they just stopped and uh, kept looking at us. We just came around the corner, turned around to to uh, see what they what they were gonna do. They just remained and stayed there. So. They came, finally came on out and uh, accelerated on the turn, tried to get around the corner before we can do the U-turn on it. And he accelerated down there. I turned on my lights and siren, he failed to stop. That's when we saw you. Yeah, went into the right down here. Uh, it wasn't until after the vehicle had stopped and the passenger got out and ran uh, that they ascertained that the vehicle was, in fact, a stolen vehicle. Um, the suspect that ran uh, was apprehended. And uh, he <laughs> picked the wrong officer to run from. Uh, officer Withams, one of our quicker guys up here, and he's really uh, tenacious. Once he starts after you, he's not going to let you go. So everybody's where they're supposed to be in jail, and everybody else is going home. So good caper. Nine one one emergency. Hello, um, this man just hit my mom over the head with the bat, and okay. she's bleeding. Ma'am, is she? St is he still there? Yes, he lives in these apartments. He lives at the very end of our block. Okay, what did he? Get, what did he hit her with? He hit her with the bat. Okay, what I want you to do is stay on the phone while I get my officers in route. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're en route to a, uh, a battery with a deadly weapon, which is a bat. Apparently, a uh, person who's calling says his mom was hit with a bat by a white male adult, and his mom's unconscious right now. Yeah, med medicals arrived. What happened? The guy is in this end apartment? Who did this? Who is he? Where's he at? You find him? And, and what's he look like? Old man? Old man mustache. End department. Open that door before he locks it. It's locked. What's he wearing? Is he wearing a tank top? Is this guy right here? Is he skinny? What about this right here? He was with him. He stayed there with him. That's one of them. That's his son. Come on out. Out to the door. That's his daughter. That's him. There he is, right there in the chair. He hit her. I seen it and everything. I heard him in my house and looked at him here in the head. Right there in the head. Stand up. It's a black bat. Stand up. Turn around. Have a seat in this chair. What's your name? How long? Fred. Fred? What happened, Fred? What happened, Fred? I got a bunch of people tried to start a fight with us. Where's your ID? Don't worry about where my ID. Where's your ID? Don't worry about where my ID. Fred, where's your wallet? Don't worry about it. What, do you, what right do you have coming here in my place? Because I'm the police. Me? And we got a problem here. Oh, you're the police. And you're the problem. Yeah. Did you hit somebody with a bat? Nope. Nope. How come everybody says you did? Well, I don't know what your ignorant ass doing here thinking I hit somebody with a bat. Come on, Fred. Let's stand up. We're going outside the door. Show your foot. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Let's go this way, Fred. Watch this, walk out this way. Were you here when it happened? I was sitting right there. Listening up, Fred? 
Because right now you're making things worse because you won't talk. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know what? You ever had? You had a bunch of people get on you? That's what I'm asking. So you need to tell me what's going on so we can figure this take out. Take me to jail, right. dude. Just take me to jail. Stand right there, Fred. Her daughter and then she got up because she's like, me a bitch. My mom's up like, you know, every trying to be all right, everything's trying to be all right. It hit her. He just hit my mom and said, that's my chewing. She's not going to die, right? No. What do the medics say? She's talking right now. What's your condition? I'm not exactly sure. She possibly has a depressed skull fracture. You want me to get a new set of skins for you? Maybe a neck injury. What does that mean? That means that he might have broken our skull. Skull? Okay. Exactly. Skull. Yeah, hold on. I can't tell because I can't palpate through all of her hair, but potentially she's pretty sick. Where are you going? Okay. Thanks. She's fine. See you. Hey. You ready? Trying to figure out what happened here tonight. She's got friends that comes over and she keeps doing this stuff. What, what did they what do? What am I gonna do? What did they do to you tonight? What they do to me tonight, they come they over, they try to, they to get it down with my family, you know, and they're saying. Doing what? Tell me some of the things they're saying and they're doing. Well, look at my son. Look at my son. Okay, what about it? Talk. Did he get his ass whooped? Look at it. Fred, I don't know. I wasn't here. That's what I'm asking. I need you to tell me that. I can't read your mind. And he has something behind his back, but we couldn't see it until he got right here. And she told him, she's like, well, what are you coming down here for? We're all neighbors. Go back to your house. We can just, we all have to live together. We have to get along. And he's like, F you, you effing bitch, and all this stuff. And he called, started calling her bitch. So she stood up and she said, just go home. Just go home. And she said, we're neighbors. And she stuck her hand out like this. And that's when he just swung the bat at her, threw like full force to her head. And she just automatically fell to the ground. She go unconscious when she went down? She was unco unconscious for a couple seconds. What seems to be the problem with, with him? Is he got something right. against you guys? Yeah, it's just, I think it's, I don't know. Like, man, I, I think, think it's race. <laughs> because like, every time. We go out with black boys. Yeah, and every he time, was, the conversation that I had with him the other day, he said, what color are you? And he held up my arm and everything. And I said, white. And he said, well, then act like it or something. And then he was calling us lovers and stuff. And we was like, man, just go in the house. Just go in the house. If you're going to drink, just stay in the house. Don't come out here and mess with us. He was like, do you lovers and all this crap. So we just, we try to ignore him, but there's only so much that you, you can you ignore. Can so what's the whole story? Well, he's going to go to jail for battery with a deadly weapon for hitting her upside the head with that bat. This is going to be a hot spot for a while. The race relations not being good here. I guess that's what happens when you mix alcohol and hate together. Right. You get somebody hurt, somebody's going to jail. He's lucky we got here in time to take him in custody and get him out of here. It's ironic that he goes to jail in a black and white police car, isn't it? I guess that's just how it is sometimes. Yeah, you still have your strong pocket of Italian right in the middle of the third district. You have your Italian market. You have, you know, all your Italian restaurants. Down on the lower end of the district, you have an influx of, you know, an Asian community with uh, Cambodians, Vietnamese. Okay, here we go. We got another one of those disturbance house calls. Again, they're the most dangerous for police to go in on. And uh, I don't have any case history on, on this particular house. Police. Open the door. Let's go. I'm not going to ask again.
What are you doing? Oh, nothing. What's the problem? Oh, nothing. What's the screaming about? Huh? What's uh, the screaming about? Oh, just if I uh, find out, that's all. What's going on? What's your name? Holy. No, hey, 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 hey. Let me see I your hand. Your yeah. All no, right. you take it out. You take it out. Okay, man. What's going on in all here? Day. It's all right. Okay. What's yeah, going I'm on in here? I'm my husband. I fire him. Okay. Yeah, what's going on? Anybody else in here? I fire him. What's his problem? Uh, I fire him. He wouldn't be, you know, but What is his problem? I fire him. He, uh, he ring, wait, he ring. I fire him. I fire uh, you. Me. You talk. Me. I fire you. Who does he want to fight? Nothing. But uh, me and white him. I fire him. Why? Why? Tell you the ball fed. I fire him. No, no. What's the problem? He lied. Why does he want to fight you? Ah, uh, he lied about it. Yeah, I'm wait. Fighting. Um, today. Yeah, you lied about it. I'm fighting you. Today he ring me, but I'm fighting you. Come down. We're not going to leave him in here uh, with you like that. Uh, please. Either, either you're going to leave or he's going to leave. Don't We're not going to leave you both here like this. Oh. He has to calm down. You want to leave yeah. until he calms down? Oh, no. He, he calm down now. No, no, no. One of you are leaving. No choice on that. I'm Go telling you. I am telling you. That's no choice. One of you are leaving. Now, we don't want to lock him up, but if he doesn't walk out of here and calm down, he's going to get locked up for his own well-being for eight hours until he calms down. All right? And explain to him that he's going to have to walk outside and go take a walk around the block. Okay, I walk outside. Go ahead. Tell him. I'm the guy. We're letting him walk out of here without getting locked up. Now you can tell us what's going on because. Uh, no, to the, me and her, him husband, you know. Together. I understand that. But uh, today he ring me, you know. But um, I have a job. I don't want him ring me, you know. But I you didn't. Want, you, you didn't want him here. No, I I don't want him ring me. No, yeah, I said. I said Vietnamese, I have custom do that. You have what? Vietnamese sick, you know, I sick before, but Vietnamese sick has custom do that. Uh, when you're Vietnamese and you're yeah. sickly, they, they, put, they mark you like that? Yeah, I feel bad. That wasn't done by him? No, no. I don't like that. Well, I'm going to tell you what, hon. They look, uh, they look mighty fresh to me. No. I don't know who you think you're trying to, but I don't think you're getting, you ain't, make, you ain't making it past me with that. Nothing. But just talk or later, that's all nothing. Well, the neighbors were saying that uh, you, a lot of screaming was going on in here. All right. I don't want to come back here tonight. Okay, thank you. Man. What's his name? <coughs> Who? No, don't look at it. What's his name? Uh, okay. All right. Well, they just don't want to be cooperative and tell us what the problem is. He's already up once. I'm not gonna take you home. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna take you home. The only place I would take you is the jail. Yeah, I go to jail. I like that. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Put your hands up against the wall. Put your hands up against yeah. the wall. You want to go to jail so bad? No, no, Put your hands up against the wall. Put your hands up against the wall. You have any needles on you? You have any needles on you? You stay out of here. Man, we gave him his chance. He didn't want to. He didn't want to cooperate with us. Please, don't do that. Well, it's his choice. And we're not going to take a chance with him being like this with you. This particular woman didn't want her man to be taken away. She was willing to risk physical harm for him. So since she wasn't going to be the complainant in Pennsylvania, you know, whenever we go to a disturbance house and it looks like there's a possibility of bodily harm, we are compelled to lock up one person. And he needs a little cooling off time anyway. Clark County Detention Center is one of the largest modular type jails in the country and we're getting bigger every day. The majority of our problems during the last few years have been overcrowding. We are right now just absolutely filled to capacity. This facility was originally built for about 865 single room inmates. 
Our count today was 2019. So as you can see, we're running out of room. We now have inmates on cots upstairs. We have them everywhere. Booking this area that you see right here is becoming a nightmare. It's becoming more and more volatile. As you can see, we've got plenty of business. Crime is alive and well. Ow! Ah! Hey, 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 you guys relax on the cuffs a bit, please. I'm being good. I'm being good. I'm being good. You guys relax a little bit. Come on, you guys. Head up. Look up at the camera. Come on over here. Oh. Ah, damn. The workers are thrilled. Ah, sit down. Ah, lean forward. I thought it was cooperating. What did they arrest you for? Because I told him to write himself a ticket for riding down the street at night without a light. Jackass. You waved him down to tell him that he didn't have a headlight on? I told him to write himself a ticket. On his bicycle? That's right. Were you on a bicycle? No, I was working. You were working? So you just had to say something to the sergeant riding down the street, huh? Yes, I did. <laughs> now I understand why you're here. You look up here. Get a on the bench. Come on. She's going to be cool, right? Yes. Yeah. That's her. Oh, great. Oh, great. He hit me. He hit me. on his knees, praying outside. Stay here. Stay here. He hit me, man. Let him go. Let him go. Stay right here. Stay right here. Daryl, put your hands on the wall. Hey, you don't have to hit me. Shut up, put your hands on the wall. Chill out. This guy hit me. No, that guy, you just saw that oh, he's, he not, he's, he's not bleeding from his face. Yeah, because I'm trying to protect what I myself. Saw, what I saw was this guy. He tried to push me. He, this guy yes. tried to push you. Yeah, he's full of something. And then you hit him. Yeah, I told him to get out of my face. This guy chased, he walked this in there guy, when it guy happened. This guy all he the walked way across in, the room and No, I ran him. after him. I did. Oh, and he was protecting himself when he ran yeah, after this guy. I sure did. Come on, you don't have to Well, were y'all into it? Are we all arguing about the phone or something? Anything? What? We no, got I think don't here. just stay still. They won't hold on to you. We got sevens empty right now, right? Yeah. Put him in Z7 until we get the paperwork done. Okay. Let me see if the nurse She's right there. Go ahead and put him in Z7. Yeah. I'd like you to look We'll do a CAB on her, Jeff, since you saw it. Pay attention where you're going. Sit down, right here. You gotta listen to us, okay? You're gonna get yourself in a lot of trouble if you don't keep running your mouth. Look up. Can you open your right eye? Yeah, you got shot pretty good. Yeah. Kevin, you give me a, you gonna be able to open your eyes and sign this stuff? No, I can't. Wait a second. All right. He has two more. All right, two. Two white metal. All right, hold tight. Get your teeth. Okay, for sure. Oh, there you go. Ah, there we go. Good girl, thank hey, you. Hey, you always got to ask a woman that's got pierced ears about how to get. You got anything else pierced yeah. we need to know about? All right. All right. Okay, sir. We're not a whole lot of trouble. Maybe I'm not, but I still don't deserve okay. from you people. I want a phone call. Okay. You have all the free phone calls. I want to have you know that my whole. Family works for the law de okay. department. Okay. They're in the, the sheriff's, but they're all sheriff's de de okay. deputies. Man, I know, I'm trying to spit it out. Would okay. you just leave me alone? Okay. No. I want to speak to my mother. She works for oh. San Bernardino department. I want to talk to her now. Oh. Now! Well, I get a phone call and I want it. Not You're now. in no position now to make demands. We will get you on the phone shortly, okay? okay. <laughs> you gave her a Tic Tac and the broker? No, she did not. We would not give her a Tic Tac and that broker. <laughs> What we're going to do, we're going to go down to Z14. We're going to conduct a shakedown. Uh, what we're looking for is possible narcotics. 
Okay, when we're going down, we're going to go in the standard lineup like we lined up prior. Jay be leading. Okay, when we go down, we'll go in the standard manner. Stomp step all the way, let them know we're coming. Mike, take him out of here. Is he next? Are you done? Yes. Sir. Take him with him. He's next. Take, take him out. Take him out. Cuff him and take him out. They're becoming more innovative in the kinds of contraband that they're bringing into the facility and the way they're getting it into the upstairs area, the security area of the facility, even though they go through strip searches, even though they go through showering. It's not unusual for us to find pens, but one of the officers in looking at this pen discovered that it was a little bit more than a pen. Uh, that's nasty, nasty. And I'm just very grateful that we got a hold of it before somebody wore it. Getting that into an overcrowded cell, built for maybe 30 people and you have 65 people crammed in there, that could easily, easily have caused the homicide within the facility. For 25 years I was an FBI agent. I was transferred to Las Vegas in the mid-70s. It was the era of the mob control of numerous of the casinos out here. The mob owned many of the hotels with the hidden ownership and the skimming. A lot of agents worked very hard with, with Metro and cleaned up the hidden ownership of these casinos. And now, 17 years later, I find myself working for a casino that is neither mob-owned or controlled. The Gold Coast. Almost all the employees and almost all the customers that come here are here for one reason, to have a good time. We have very few problems here. Uh, but this is an industry with a lot of cash, and there are some people, it's rare, but people come here and try to take advantage of us. So we have a fairly elaborate surveillance system and camera system, which we use to protect ourselves and our customers. Here we are upstairs in what historically has been known as the eye in the sky. It goes completely around the main pit here at the Gold Coast. It is also at our, at our new pit on the addition. And you can see that it's a long corridor called, and what we stand on is what historically, when you hear people talk about the catwalk, and that's where our, our surveillance people used to stand. They had binoculars, telephones, and they were able to zero in on activity in the pit at the various games. Uh, if they saw something themselves, they could call the pit. We had telephones up here. Uh, if the guys in the pit saw something they didn't like, they were able to call up. But like everything else, technology catches up with us, and we no longer use this catwalk except on very, very rare occasions. But for the most part, we went to uh, a far more sophisticated way of doing it, which now allows our people to uh, watch much more of the casino at the same time uh, through videotape. We're inside our surveillance room now, and as you can see, we're basically, uh, the camera that, that we're looking at now was in the same place on the catwalk that we're standing, that we were standing. And you can see how they can go straight into the game. They can count the chips on the racks. The red chips are $5 chips, the green ones are 25 And you can, if you come back just a little bit, you can see the hands and then you could focus in on an individual hand, you can fo focus in on the chip, the amount of the bet, the player. It's just, uh, it's remarkable uh, what these cameras can do. And uh, you can see that uh, they're excellent, they give us excellent pictures, uh, which is how uh, anybody that's ever tried to rob a casino in Las Vegas has been unsuccessful. Hey, one of the most common uh, thefts occurred are pitching and uh, cappers. Pitching would uh, be removing a, p a portion of the player's bet, his bet, so he wouldn't lose that much. His, uh, his odds are not in favor of him winning at this point, so he's removing a part of a bet before the dealer gets to his spot. Uh, over here, we have a railbird. 
real bird. It's a person that'll stand near a player and craps and try to distract his attention. Over here, you'll see a perfect example of the player ordering a drink and not paying attention to his money. This patron here in the jacket will wait for uh, the right time. And over here, you can see him, he's just staring right at the bet. And as soon as uh, the time's right, he's gonna go in here and grab his money. And nine out of 10 times, the subject will just take a portion of it. Okay, what we have here is an incident where a player has a good hand and he wants to increase his bet, which is an illegal act. And it's, to, it's, it's definitely to his advantage. There's the move right there. The dealer caught it. And uh, the infraction could, could lead up to a year in jail with an illegal move. And uh, cheating in Las Vegas and table games, it's a write-off, it's a felon. You're on a felon charge when you cheat at any of the table games or any of our slot machines. And you see, she tossed it back. The dealer's doing a very good job of protecting her game. Here's another incident of a capping. He's got a $25 original bet. He has a very good hand, and he'll lay it on by using the card. All of a sudden, it becomes $50. You flip it over. In fact, the player's got blackjack, which he even, he even gets paid even more than his original bet. Here's an incident where the dealer's flashing her hit card to the players. Okay, what you're looking for is just to see the card a little bit. And she's looking at it, too. She'll flash to the, to the lady. There it goes right there. Flashing occurs. One of the oldest moves in the business. Here's a, just two weeks ago, Here's an incident. The, the film is kind of blurred. This is one of our quad cameras. But you'll see a fellow here demanding the money from one of our change girls. And over here on the right-hand side, he's got uh, a small revolver in its holster. It's one of the holsters where you can fire through the revolver at the girl. And our policy here is our employees are not to resist a robbery, but try to get their best description. This girl, obviously, when somebody points a gun at you, you don't know what's going to happen. and she's reluctant to give him the money. Now he's just pulled the gun out of the, out of the holster itself, you see, and she's, he's demanding the money, and she doesn't want to give it to him. There's a struggle on the floor now, and we'll see another camera zero in, and we'll see him down here on the floor. He's still holding the gun, which was armed. There's the money down on the floor. Very dangerous situation when you have guns. Uh, they're just not successful here, because it's inside. We have the cameras. This fellow's still struggling. Uh, the amazing thing about this is uh, this gentleman turned out to be a retired police officer from back east, from a state that if you're convicted of a felony, you lose your pension. We're really proud here in Las Vegas of the security people that work in these casinos. They're all trained. They all do their job well and, and uh, they never know what they're going to run into from day to day here. They work with Metro very well, and what he's doing with him now, they're taking him around the back of the building to where we have a place where we detain uh, people that need detaining, and we just call Metro, and uh, they'll come and take it from there. He's been charged and is currently in jail on, on uh, armed robbery charges. I think anyone that's ever came to Las Vegas realizes there's no place in the world you can come and spend two or three days and have more fun. But I think you will uh, realize by now that if you do come, don't try to cheat us. We're not going to cheat you, and if you try to cheat us, uh, you're going to go to jail. 911 emergency. There's someone out in front of my house shooting out a gun. Do you know who this guy is? I have no clue. Okay. He's come out here yelling. I, I think someone might be hurt because I can't tell, though. Okay. Who's that, who's that crying there in the back? No, it's just they're just scared. I need someone to come here quick. No, I listen. Gunshot listen. Again. Okay, I understand, sir. Okay, we're gonna get someone there. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? Patrol five eight one to arrive the area. Well, we got a call of a subject that pulled up in a dark truck in front of a house and has been shooting a gun, and we're just around the corner. Frank, I'll call. We got some people up here. Control 23. 
What's going on out here? My, um, my daughter and a bunch of her friends were coming over here to get her medicine. Is that person with the gun still here? Chasing her. Yeah. Original, they still here? No, originally somebody was chasing them with a gun. Somebody. It's clear. Who was shooting the gun? Nobody shot a gun. No, not to my knowledge. I live down at the end of the street, and I'm sitting in the living room. Let's go over here real quick, and then we'll okay. get this sorted out. I hear people screaming for help. And I grabbed my pistol out of the drawer. Oh, by the way, I cleared it here. OK. Stay right there. OK, I want you to go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Put them together like you're praying. Put them together like you're praying. OK, spread your legs. Spread them a little more. You don't have another one or anything like that? OK, go ahead. I'm listening. I came out the door and saw a big group of people. I started walking that way. They started screaming and hollering. Who was? The That's group the of problem. people that were out here? Do you the know who they were? group of people, apparently they were kids. That's what we found out now. But they, apparently somebody was chasing them with a gun. And that's why they were screaming. Now how did you help. get that? Uh, just from the conversation here. Come here, guys. Are you getting any info? They're just not, they know what This is my daughter, Danielle. Come here, come here, I need to talk to you guys. She's, she can tell you the name of the kid. Okay, and one's name is Greg. Happened. We were just coming down the street. What? And this is Greg, okay. We were coming down the street, and I guess we were messing with him. He was like, get out of the road. We were like, you get out of the road. Just messing around, you know? And then they tried to kill, they were, uh, they had a gun. The they were gonna kill him. <laughs> they threw him against the wall. And he, he's like, come on, Josh, like that. And then all of a sudden, that guy was there. He came out, he goes, freeze like that. And I didn't know who he was. And he put and a gun to like He put a gun to me. He can't do This guy that. did. He can't do that. Because he heard you all yelling that you had a, somebody had a gun, right? Yeah, and we were scared. They told us to go away. And then he got you know, in. You know these kids? Yeah, one of them rides my bus. And where do they live? Do you know that? <laughs> I thought he lived in the apartments, but the, I know the house that he's always at. I know. Did, did, they, did they actually shoot the gun? Hey. No, he needs to go get these girls. She's scared. Okay. Did he point the gun at you or did he actually shoot? Did he shoot? No, but he was Just about he point. was going to shoot up in the air. He was going to shoot us. Okay. What? Did he never actually shot? No. A little bit. And give him. He needs. I can't. It's okay. Go ahead and get the descriptions and stuff. Okay. <laughs> Sir. Obviously, you had a problem with one of the kids. I was in the house with my wife watching TV with the kids. And you're and down by the corner? Right off the uh, OK. OK, and I hear all this yelling and screaming coming down the street. Did you hear what they were saying or yelling and yes. screaming about? Yes, they were uh, talking about Ray's daughter. OK, you, that bitch, you, and this and that, don't uh -huh. tell us what to do, and this and that, and all that. And I'm like, these are little teenage kids. Was it these kids or was it some yeah, other yes, kids? Yes, it was, it was these kids. Okay, and that little girl in the striped shirt turns around and looks at me and says, what are you staring at, you And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I don't take lip off little kids. I work uh -huh. for the county and I do, you know, I work with kids all the time and I don't take lip off. So Ray and uh, Gary are following these kids down the street saying, you know, you got a problem, come back and let's talk about it. You know, they, I heard not one word about a gun and this and that. Right. All they're doing is they're turning around and they're cussing them out because they came up and his grandchildren. And who's Gary? Gary's the guy down here, the guy that had the gun. That's where that's the first time I heard anything about a gun. They turned around here, and Gary said, you all need to stop right here because I do have a gun. That's all he said. And then they're all freaking out. Somebody's chasing us with a gun and pointing us in the head with a gun. I never heard a word one about a gun before that. Can you grab a volunteer and get him started on one? Because now we're getting a whole different story. I'm not lying to you, I promise. <laughs> Did you find any shell casings? None. They're very cooperative. Let us check the car, check the room. I'm sorry, What's I'm their not story? To. They, they haven't been up. Sir. How many gun classes have you taken? Several. Several. And which class did they tell you to go out and confront a bunch of uh, teenage or juvenile out in the middle of the street with a gun? Nobody told me to go confront anyone with a gun. Okay. To me, what it sounded like is you got a bunch of smart mouth kids that live in the neighborhood. They're probably tired of their crap. I can understand that part. It still doesn't, doesn't it justify it. Okay, well, 
whatever the problem is, you know that there was a problem and there were some kids with running their mouths. It wasn't appropriate. They were wrong. Hopefully our parents are going to deal with that. I would just say next time, use your head a little bit. Keep the gun put away unless there's actually a life-threatening situation and this was not it. Okay, great. As it turns out, it doesn't look like we've really had a crime happen here other than maybe some really rude kids that had some problems with their neighbors in the neighborhood and they bit off a little bit more than they could chew. We've dealt with that, we've dealt with the kids and hopefully that'll be the end of it for tonight. Been with Metro for about a year and a half now. Came from a smaller department in Durango, Colorado. Come here to work in the big city. A lot more stuff out here to do and it's a lot of fun. The thing I like about it most is the, the teamwork out here. You work with a bunch of real good guys. Uh, to me, that's the, a big part of the job, if you can get along with the people you work with and stuff, and we can come out here and have a good time. That's what I like about it most. We're uh, en route to a domestic now. So between two people is all we have. Unknown what's, uh, what's happening, they called 911 and nothing was said. Should be just right up here somewhere. So we've got another unit in the area already. You get several of these calls a night. We're here. There's a 404 and Charlie Foot. Nine Bonita. Nice. Nice. <laughs> What happens if okay. you're fighting with your wife again? What do you want us to do? I didn't know. I didn't start nothing. I got... Okay. I didn't start... Wait a minute. Wait. I'll be all right. I speak to someone, please. Can we put him in the room? Come on. Come on. I, I have no... Uh, Come on. Come on. Put you in the you wait a minute. Come on. My friend. As long as he stops uh, barking, we're fine. Is anybody in back here, please? Just, okay. Sir, just talk to me. What do you want us to do? I don't know. Wait. I'm going to call somebody for something, okay? I have a right. That's my right. I come in. Who was that? And he started. Driving. Somebody. Okay. So I told him I can't take this. I'm going to go to social service if he wants help. I can't live with the man. Trouble. She's trouble? Yes. What is she doing? I'm not trouble. Every damn thing you can think of. Okay. I'm going on 80 years old. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a, I'm, in a, I'm a cripple. We've been married 20 years. I don't care. Yeah, we've been married eight, and, and uh, the last 20, month, 18 years. This is coming mm. out. All right. What are we going to do to solve the problem tonight? The problem is that she has a big damn mouth. I, I haven't heard a word that oh. she said since I've been in here. Only you. Only you, Bernard. It's true. Come on, boy. You, you've been around a little bit, haven't you? No, a little bit. I have to. So I'm not a troublemaker. Okay. And you go into the room tonight, just hang out in the room tonight, he so he'll calm down. Please, he's he's making it hey Bernard, she's I willing to go halfway, okay? What, she I wants to go into the room, look, so quit being what. so stubborn and let's Look, please, I am not gonna take that. I don't realize what's gonna happen sooner or later. She could, when I turn my head, she can hit me on the head. Now that's when I turn my head, I she can do it. I think she probably would have done that already if she was going to do that. He's a sick lady. Okay, do me a favor. Just I know. go I ahead and I'm go ahead and take your cigarettes and everything into the room and try to hang out in there for a little while and see if we can get everything calmed down. So. Okay. I ain't got nothing against nobody. Do you got somebody you can stay with tonight, Bernard? Hey, Bernard, you got somebody you can stay with tonight? Myself, I'm not going out of my own home. I pay everything here. I went the other night. Yeah. I pay everything. Can you go to a hotel tonight or something? No. Every no. Why should we're just uh, gonna have to. These, this is one of those situations where this is gonna happen. Oh yes, it's gonna happen. It's going. Yeah, oh yes, it's gonna happen. Maybe again and again. Maybe I don't know. Sure. Well, it's all been approved. You just stay here, relax. You don't talk to her. She's not gonna talk to you.
Oh, wait a minute. He's supposed to. He was only here five minutes ago. Well, he's five, ten headed minutes? Up. He's what? He's up to here. Probably, huh? He probably doesn't want to answer the phone now. What do you mean he won't answer? He's my friend. He's been my friend for years. Don't get involved. That's Come on, don't tell me that bull. <laughs> Stop that bull. <laughs> you ain't kidding nobody, sister. You're not kidding anybody. Believe me, you're not. And if there's anything that happens, if anything happens, you boys are going to be in trouble. Okay, Bernard, me, if anything happens, you give us a call back. Bernie, yeah. try this solution. Try this solution on, all right? You sit there and you don't say anything to her. You sit there, don't say anything to him. Problem solved, right? Please, I don't... There's a solution. No. I, no? Please, well, look, please, I God is my judge. I hate myself. I gotta right. take through tonight. Okay. I'll take my I clothes out here and get you alone, you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'll stay out. We've given you the only that solution that we can. That so. is a lot of... See you later, Bernard. Okay, Bernard. okay, I don't think this is right, and I don't think it's fair, and I'm telling you now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write, and I'm gonna write, and I am gonna have it, and I am gonna have it taped, and, and if you don't think I ain't got a tape, mister, I got news for you. I get three tapes if I need tapes. I'm going on 80 years old, but if, if anything happens... Okay, Bernard. Okay. You we'll can, see you ya. Can, you can say, you can do any... See, every time I try to call the police department, there's always someone that says something different, like the other night. He says he wants a solution, you give him a solution, and... He doesn't want to have anything to do with it, so did all we can do. It's only 12 o'clock now. They're pretty early to be fighting like this, because like I said, last time it came out about 4, and they were going at it. But what are you going to do? Couples in love. Exactly.